So we're going to create our first step, plan sheet definition. Again, this could be review uh, for some of you. We can be set up at a specific scale or one-to-one, -one, as I said earlier. Uh, if you do it at a one-to-one -one scale, let's say you just make one sheet C definition for plan sheets, right? Well, you can do that, but then you're going to need to train the user to, look, to teach them how to set their scales uh, a couple different places on that second dialogue and also how to attach the proper annotation group. So some of the agencies that I do this for, they, they like a different sheet C definition for every scale. And some just say, you know, just give me the basics and we'll teach our users how to set the scales and the dialogues. And that works fine. But where it gets uh, kind of tricky is when you're looking at your profiles and you have different uh, scales based on or different frequencies, I guess, of station labels and elevation labels on your profile grid. Sometimes it can get a little tricky and trying to get the right annotation group is somewhat of a challenge and so some of the agencies basically would just like to have a different entry for every scale combination but you can do it either way if you're adding multiple sheets it's suggested to space them along the alignment versus stacking them on top of one another and then the horizontal alignment can be changed anytime i mentioned that earlier so it's you get down the road and you realize later that it'd be nice to have more alignment there you can always make that later all right so let's take a look at creating our first plan sheet and so we've restarted the product. We're going to go into drawing production and go into our place name boundary. And we're going to set our scale. So I'm going to do this at a one inch is 50 feet, which is a 600 ratio. And you're going to set your, your length, your plan length, and your left and right offsets. If you need an overlap and adjust your boundary chords. By the way, 20 chords or even 10 chords is a lot. Five is a pretty good number. But you want to click in your start location, touch your alignment. But before you accept this, you make sure you go back over and set up your uh, group name here. And so I'm going to do that. You want to do this after you've accepted it. And it's basically in the location where you're getting ready to place it. That's when you come back over and type in your group name. You can put in a description if you want. And I'm going to accept. You just want to place one. That'll take us into our next dialog, and I just copied and pasted my name into these three fields. So you want to set those the same. You could make them different if you want. If you can't pick your discipline and purpose, then that tells me you haven't restarted the product. Uh, so that's where you'll get hit on that. Set your scale, set your annotation group. By the way, that does copy the annotation definitions and groups into this file when you do that. Say OK. Then we're going to move, I typically like to move the uh, drawing boundary handle, and then I'm going to go in and place my title block. Some people reference in a title block and then merge to master. Some will place a cell. I'm just showing a cell placement here. You could put a bar skill in here if you wanted to do that. Then I need to go to my references. I want to move my references and put that where it belongs. So I've got some construction class lines in there, and I need to snap my corners from my drawing boundary. It's important. Don't forget that. Also, you want to turn off your scale for your custom line style. If you don't do that, your custom line scale is scaled twice. So you don't want that. And once we got that set up, that's pretty much it. There will be a next step that you'll see that we need to do to this, uh, which is important and new uh, to 2021. And so let's go over to this next slide. This is new and, and very important. Uh, we can, in our drawing model, Plan view only. Please don't do this for profile or cross sections right now. It's not supported. Just change in the drawing models to get our settings from design model. Well, why would we do that? Well, let's say that in our design model, we want to turn off our construction class, and maybe we want to add a new attachment. Maybe we want to turn off some levels, get this ready to plot. So we go do all that in our design model. But hey, Chuck, you know, I've already cut 100 sheets. Do I really have to go turn those out or make those same adjustments in 100 sheets? Now, the answer to that is no. In your drawing model of these sheet C definitions for your plan, you can change this to say, I want to obtain my settings from the design model and then save your settings. And by doing that, now you make changes in your design model. Um, it carries through to all your sheets. And so that's a very, very powerful option. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. And just a couple of notes here. Profile and cross-section drawing models are not supported this time. Allows the view of the settings and design model carry over. And that, that also includes uh, turning on and off construction. And by the way, if you want to see those changes live instantly, you want to compress your design file in your design model after you make your 
level changes or your construction class, turn them on and off, compress the design. Then when you go to your sheet models, it'll instantly pick it up. If not, you might have to go to one sheet model, then open another, come back, that type of thing to get it refreshing. But compress, I will go ahead and force it. So this video is going to show this real quick. Just switching over to the drawing model, go to my references, double click, and just change my synchronous view to settings from design model. Hit OK. And then save settings. And that's all you have to do. It's that quick. I typically like to reset back to the multi-model view also when I'm done. Did find out something not too long ago. Don't save settings in your sheet model. It causes problems. And especially if you're working in project-wise and you're cutting sheets, uh, we're seeing sometimes the, the anchor points get lost. And so I don't know why. We just found this not too long ago. So when you're all done working in this DG and Lib, make sure you save your settings, uh, not in the sheet model. I usually just use the multi-model view. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.